Ricardo, bom. Hello everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Lovely to see so many familiar faces here early in the morning. Today's first debate is crypto's only use case is speculation. For we have Tarun, founder of Gauntlet, against we have Vibhu, founder of Drip. My role My role in this will mostly just be controlling time between the two and for the manlets we have a little gonglet as well so we might kind of ring that. Um, all right, why don't we start with the foresight, or the, yeah. Great. Uh, hey, everyone. So uh, first off, I think uh, I want to say that for this debate, I'm going to really only be talking about on-chain usage. Uh, I think generally off-chain usage or RWAs are kind of distinct from uh, the notion of speculation within crypto itself. Um, and if we think about crypto itself, it's really best when it can be used as censorship-resistant programmable money. Uh, and given that context, the argument for why speculation will be a dom the dominant application is the following. And we'll kind of go through the points and then and why each point uh, uh, holds. So the first property okay. is that to, money has a lot something? of properties that are synergistic with speculation. No shit, Sherlock, right? Like, everyone kind of would agree with that. Um, but the second thing that's important is censorship-resistant money has weaker liquidity and asset concentration effects than censorable money. So I can always kind of replicate an asset, make a new asset, uh, find liquidity for it. Liquidity isn't locked to, to particular assets in a way that's very different than censorable money, like fiat. This inherent liquidity and asset fragmentation creates a natural reason to have speculative and arbitrage value, which means that because there's many pools that are fragmented, it's, there's a lot more reason to actually be trading all the time. And this naturally means that the most profitable activity on chain will be speculation and trading, uh, and there's a feedback loop, loop there. And a very key point to this is that censorship-resistant money cannot really bound what percentage of the economy is used uh, for speculation versus the real economy that, that does do that. OK. So the first step in this argument that I said was uh, uh, money has a bunch of properties that make it good for speculation. Everyone is here in this room, so uh, if you didn't know that, I would be dumbfounded. Um, but there's sort of four properties of money that really uh, are really useful for speculation. First, naturally, it's a store of value. Second, it can act as a numeraire, so you can measure relative value. Third is scarcity, so you, know, you, you understand that you're not being inflated away. And fourth, stability. These four properties naturally are competing with one another to ensure that there's a lot of trading volume. Anytime a new asset is created, some of the liquidity that is in other assets have to, have to migrate, which inevitably threatens the stability of the asset. Digital commodities, tokens, meme coins, NFTs, anything that anyone in this room is embarrassed to admit to their grandmother that they've bought, have negligible creation costs. There's no real legal, human, or physical costs, and as we are using Solana, I don't think the gas cost is, is, is much of a, an issue either. Second, censorship resistance breeds liquidity fragmentation. This is sort of kind of obvious, uh, probably more if you look at roll-ups, where every time you go on a new roll-up, you see 500 versions of USDC, and you're not sure which one you're supposed to use. But in general, there's always no incentive to stick to existing assets. There's oftentimes a lot of incentive to create a new asset, to attract liquidity to a new asset, and fragment existing liquidity. This naturally creates a, a speculative feedback loop between new asset creation, uh, drying out liquidity from existing assets, and arbitraging the difference between the two. Naturally, this becomes a very profitable activity. Uh, there, there will always exist some subset of the populace that has positive expected returns from this. And because of censorship resistance, you can't really restrict how much speculation there is. 
I can't do something like a government would do, such as force reserve requirements or not allow you to trade a title. 30 more seconds on opening remarks. Cool. Uh, naturally, this concentration effect of having a strictly positive profitable activity in a feedback loop uh, with new asset creation is inevitably too hard to stop. And any other application would need to create more excess value to the entire network than this trading activity, which seems extremely unlikely. I rest. Thank you. And against, Vibhu? OK. Um, thank you for that uh, PhD thesis. Um, <laughs> Someone had to do it. <laughs> All right, I'm going to start out by uh, asking you a question. So I brought this bag up on stage. And um, I'm curious, like, if anyone wants to call it, what do you think is in this bag? Art, money, OK. So in fact, it's, um, it is a version of Tarun's old hair. I don't know if you've seen it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but um, I bring this to make the point that, um, in fact, this is just the bag. It, is a, it has the utility of carrying something for me. And yet, uh, it's relatively easy to get people to speculate upon something that isn't actually very speculative. And, um, and humans, I mean, we speculate on everything. Okay, I could also ask, what are the chances you think I'm going to put this on for the photo op? Pro probably pretty high <laughs> at some point. Why not? Um, but it doesn't change the nature of, um, of what the technology does. I and mean, you can think about a bag as a piece of technology in this example. Um, my belief, actually, and this is a radical thing to say, is that um, crypto is actually anti-speculative technology. It's actually um, the most anti-speculative economic device that we've ever created. And um, I would ask you to consider that um, how do people speculate? Right? They speculate when they don't know something. If I had simply come up on stage and I just put this here and I'd said, um, what am I holding? Um, there's, no, uh, there's nothing you can speculate on, right? It's quite transparent that I'm holding a purple wig. And uh, that's what a blockchain is, right? A blockchain is. Um, a system where everybody knows um, all of the information at all times. And uh, now, um, to some of his points about so like store of value, I think you said scarcity, stability, measure relative value. Um, in my opinion, I, it's, re it's very hard to argue that uh, the only, um, it's very hard to argue that there isn't speculation happening because, again, anyone can speculate on anything at any time. Um, that's just a hum, uh, human property. Um, but what I can say is that I think that the faster that information travels between people, the faster that everyone knows um, the same things at the same time, um, the less, um, the less um, speculation there is. Uh, I'll give you an example um, of how on-chain products are actually much less speculative than their real-world uh, counterparts. Uh, there was this famous uh, there was this tweet the other day that kind of went um, uh, viral which, uh, from Vitalik, and he was talking about um, on-chain lending versus real-world lending. And, um, and there's a huge difference, right? Because in the real world, uh, lending, you have credits. Um, you're taking out a loan against assets that the lender doesn't necessarily um, completely understand. Um, and uh, this, uh, this practice is um, uh, just kind of how it works. And there's layers and layers and layers upon layers of speculation in the, in the lending space in the real world. On chain, lending is actually like super unspeculative, right? Every if you want to take out a loan against an NFT, um, you have to like you can only lend against the NFT's value itself. That's on chain. Uh, if you're taking out a loan against any assets, usually it's fully collateralized or over collateralized. Um, so there's actually there's actually nothing. Um, there's no speculation involved in that um, piece at all. Now uh, I think you could say, well, Vibu, there's um, look at what's happening with the tokens. They're going up and down all the time. There's so much speculation happening. Oh my gosh. Um, but uh, if you observe, uh, in my opinion, uh, uh, what's happening on crypto is speculation is happening in a very compressed amount of time. Um, and price discovery, especially on Solana and fast chains, uh, you have like almost instantaneous price discovery. Uh, why does every token go to zero very quickly? Because there's actually very little underlying value to many of them. And the market finds that out almost as quickly as, as could be. In the real world, Tons of, I mean, I, I, to Tolly's, uh, one of Tolly's ideas about Solana is that uh, one of the reasons that Solana exists is 
to remove the, uh, the impact of somebody knowing something that you don't know and being able to man manipulate a market um, or to kind of like cut in front of you in line in a trade. And 30 seconds left on opening remarks. Take profits. Um, and, um, and so I think to me, uh, what's, uh, the faster blockchains get, um, the less speculation we're going to see. And um, you can never eliminate it completely. That's a really, again, really can't argue that. Um, but I think Solana, uh, relative to all other chains, is um, really the anti-speculation um, machine uh, in, in some ways. So that's, that's my argument. Thank you, Vibhu. Tarun, two minutes on feelings, replies to what Vibhu has shared here as his view against crypto as a speculative asset. Yeah. Um, I think there's certainly some non-speculative activity that exists in blockchains, right? There, there is digital property. The digital property rights um, are inevitably encumbered in a way that might not allow them to, to trade as freely as you might expect. Um, with the ex example uh, of, of lending versus in the real world where you can lend against things you don't fully understand versus on-chain where you really need transparency and Oracle pricing and liquidity. However, I think there are a, a few points there that I would say I strongly disagree with. The first point is the idea that a faster chain uh, will have less speculation. Um, to quote Tolly, I think the, the goal of Solana is to, to bring the NASDAQ on chain, to bring one of the places that is the home of the greatest speculative market in the world on chain, to be able to support that in a way that's decentralized. Uh, and I think, in general, that, that goal of being able to be faster and having higher price discovery means that there's less risk that you take in speculating on these assets than you would in, in prior markets or on other chains. And so I think there is, there's a natural actual reason for the increased usage of technology within crypto to improve UX, to improve speed, and to improve distribution of actually making speculation much more high throughput. Uh, and I think that, that is sort of one, of one of the things that seems to actually be more true and, and, and resounding over time. On the other hand, I think you, you also brought up items that maybe people don't care about transferring, say, say the, the bag that you have, or, or a representation of a memory of, of the past. I certainly agree. Um, but even amongst commerce platforms that exist within Web2, there is inherently secretly speculation. That speculation is not transparent to the end user. The end user actually is the product of that speculation. That, that speculation is people bidding in ad auctions. That speculation is people buying influencer time. All of those things themselves have a speculatory aspect. OK. We're going to go over to Vibu as a reply for two minutes and a few yeah. seconds. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, uh, I also find myself agreeing with what you're saying. But um, again, we cannot argue whether speculation happens. I think we can really, really argue is crypto more speculative or less speculative than what came before it in terms of economic systems. So in the commerce example that you just mentioned, um, great example because um, I think you can think of, you know, what are the things, like all economic activities on some kind of spectrum between uh, maybe commerce and investment. And there's lots of things like if you buy a, a bag from a, uh, like an Hermes bag, okay, um, expensive bag, um, it's part commerce, it's part investment, right? There's lots of things that kind of um, are somewhere in there. But um, in, in the case of crypto payments, there's actually almost zero speculation happening at all because of the properties of crypto, right? It's uh, when I put the money into the account, you can see it at the same time that I can see it. And there's nothing really to, um, there's nothing to, to imagine there, right? And in fact, the word speculation uh, is a very interesting word because it's been uh, <laughs> changed and, and used in many different ways over time. Um, it is about imagining, it's actually about imagination, it's about imagining a future that, um, that you can see maybe somebody else cannot. Um, and crypto, again, it's just completely wiping that away and always very present. It's always about what, is, um, what can I see? Um, and everyone can see it and what can we do with it? Um, you mentioned property rights. Another good example because um, I think you would agree that when something uh, moves very slowly, uh, like when, the, when uh, an asset cannot be sold very easily, um, it does allow for uh, less price discovery and therefore less, um, uh, less speculation. You also you said, I, I think uh, you said that um, there's less risk in speculating on chain, but that's kind of a, uh, an interesting thing in to fact, argue because um, I think uh, you, those two things are really the same, right, in some ways. Like, 
And, um, and so if you can argue that, uh, that there's less risk in speculating on chain, then you're also arguing that uh, crypto is much less speculative than... Thank you, Vibu. Uh, We're going to go back yeah. to Tarun for 90 seconds and some extra time there on your closing remarks before we ring the gauntlet. <laughs> Great. Yeah, so I think the main thing uh, I want to kind of uh, emphasize for you is crypto's story has been a story about creating a new type of commodity, a new type of money, and a new type of notion of verifiable provenance for assets that are purely digital. In that world, the idea of speculating on these assets, the idea of creating new assets, is just as easy as creating a new social network, as creating a new social network account or liking a post. This is something that, you know, if you went back 100 years and went to, uh, you know, the SEC and you told them, people will not be making assets by buying orange groves and trying to give you the, f the dividends from that, but people are actually just going to be making jokes and meme coins and making those assets and trading them. The idea that this is even possible is amazing to someone 100 years ago, and it's inevitable that the person who you would tell would ask, how can I buy these assets? How can I bet on these assets? And in this vein, uh, crypto is naturally a place for speculation. The speculatory aspects, because of, because of the censorship resistance properties, because of the fact that there's constantly new assets, effectively ensures that the highest profitable activity will be speculation in its various shapes and forms. Thank you. Closing statements, Vibhu, before we switch? Um, yeah, so um, I think that, uh, yeah, unfortunately, um, I, don't, uh, I don't disagree with how you have phrased this argument, but um, to say that speculation is going to be the most profitable thing is, is actually crazy. Like, and one of the things you mentioned was that that's, uh, Tolly's goal has been the NASDAQ on chain. I think people misunderstand. NASDAQ is not an incredible business. Uh, in fact, the things that are represented in the exchange are like, collectively like, significantly bigger than the total amount of, kind of uh, revenues that something like that might produce. Um, but I do think that the reason that feels that way today is because the only thing that we have working today in crypto is exchanges um, at, a, at a high level. But um, that really is changing. I mean, there's so many interesting things that I'm, I'm sure you would agree are being built on, on all chains, especially on Solana on the consumer side, including Drip and, and other things like that. Um, that are, uh, in my opinion, and, and I think uh, if this industry is to, um, to survive, are going to be much, much bigger than um, the things that are happening on chain today. Um, so, yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of what I have to say. Okay, thank you, gentlemen. Now you will have an opportunity to take the other side for a minute each, because I know this is a complex topic. And as the first debate tonight, we have to do this. The honors. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you can start this time, people. Okay, so yeah, we, we were asked to, uh, to have to argue both sides um, even for a little bit. Um, so uh, when I was researching this topic, um, um, I, I kind of flipped views a little bit. So originally my emotional reaction was, uh, no, of course, it can't just be speculation. There's so many things that are not speculation. Then I did a lot of research and I felt, in fact, um, uh, you know, everything is kind of speculative and so it's really, really tough, like I said, to argue that crypto doesn't have a lot of speculative elements. Um, but I wouldn't say that, uh, that we wouldn't be here without speculation because, uh, and to the point of like information uh, traveling faster, um, creating less and less speculation over time, um, that kind of worked the opposite way in the favor of crypto because um, like Bitcoin in fairness is like, is quite slow. Um, Ethereum, um, much faster now than it was, but uh, was a little bit faster. And you can see in like each, each successive generation of blockchains, uh, a lot more speculation, a lot more volatility um, in the early days, uh, and uh, and kind of I think starting to um, you know find a resting place. Thank you, Tarun. Yeah, speculation brings a lot of capital, and uh, that's really important for building things. So yeah, yeah. So my argument against uh, crypto being strictly about speculation, um, if we look at the history of of cryptocurrency, it's, it has been able enabled by a constant stream of technological advances in cryptography, so public key systems, zero knowledge proofs, trusted enclaves, decentralized systems in the sense of new protocols that could have more larger and larger validator sets, and new hardware. And each time there was a new update in technology, 
to cryptocurrency systems. Either existing chains took advantage of that and upstreamed those features, or a new chain came and built an cha ecosystem around those new features. There was excess value created in each of those examples. So Solana being a great example where, by taking advantage of a lot of hardware updates and different architectural decisions, you're able to get faster performance. There is clearly a value difference between that and a, a, a thing where the existing speculation does not grow with the technology. Cool. Thank you so much to both the debaters. Thank you to the audience. Thank you. Have a good rest of your day.